Samaritan woman and Jesus, right? Let's go down to verse 13. G, got it? Take your time. Any questions while this is on? Mickey, maybe you have a question. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 please. Okay. One. <laughs> no, I'm just waiting for that. How about you, Julia? Any question? Who can I pick? How about you? Our, our synthesizer. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Can I ask you a question? How many spirits are flowing in you? In you? Seven. Can you name? Um, seven. Mm, that's good. John 7, verse 37, 38, and 39. This verse, while he's getting it, these three verses speaks to believers, speaks to you and me. It's not speaking to the world. Amen? Amen? Amen. He's speaking to us. This is the promise of the Holy Spirit. I'll just read till he gets it. John 7. Oh, here it is. On the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirst, let him come to me. That means to Jesus. When we say this verse, we are, Jesus is giving us an invitation. Hey, come. Come to me. It's an invitation. 
invitation. Yes? It's an invitation. And drink. Drink, that means eat the word of God. Yeah? Let's go to the next verse. Anyone thirst? We are all thirsty. I'll just go back to 37 and explain. If anyone thirsts, that means we must have the thirst in us. <clears throat> it's like natural water. When we are thirsty, we drink and drink and drink. But when we are also thirsty for spiritual things, to read the word, to pray, to worship, to come together like this and give yourself your life, your whole life must be given to the church. Not outside. When your life is in the church, that means when you come in, you are partaker of the church. You commune with the church. Your life is here. That means you are surrendering your life. You are giving your life to be a part of this body of Christ. Amen. Not come here just to warm, not come here just to fellowship, exchange business cards. No. Your life must be here. If your life is here, fruitful, you will be fruitful out there. Amen? Amen? Here first. Everything begins in the house of God. <coughs> Amen? Okay? Is anyone thirsty? So we, we are thirsty. We want Jesus. That's why we are here to learn and hear the word. So we will come and we will, we will have a fellowship with him. Uh, verse, verse 37, 38. You got it? He who believes in me. I mean, we, talking of Jesus, as the scripture had said, out of his heart will flow rivers. First we saw fountain, right? Yes. And then, now it's rivers. So we have fountain, we have rivers, in us. Out of his heart, the Mr. Heart is out of our heart will flow rivers of living water. That means when we speak, we are giving living water. But if you one foot in the world, one foot in Jesus, and when the fountain comes up and somebody needs help, what is coming up? Dirty water, clean water, when it comes together, cannot function. So we must come to a part in life that we will not, we are in this world, but we will not act like people of this world. Especially musicians, worship leaders, that you will not listen to worldly songs. You will not play worldly music. Amen? You will not listen to worldly music because when you listen this and listen this and hear, when you come, you are not a yielded vessel. You are not a vessel of honor. You must be careful, those who are in ministry. And even if you are not in ministry as a child of God, day by day, you listen to the world. Yeah, you listen to the world. You listen to the world. You listen to the world. You are far away from here. By and by, the world eats you up. So let's be careful of our life. So that we can be a witness. We can be an example, a follower of Jesus. Although his lifestyle, not our lifestyle, God has set a standard for us. And let's be in that standard, in that bracket, and work to get higher. Alright? <clears throat> so remember, out of your heart, out of your belly, out of your belly will flow fountain, will flow rivers of living water, not dirty water. Rivers of living water. See, verse 19, uh, verse 39, this, but this he spoke concerning the Spirit. So we have, the, we have received the Holy Spirit. Amen? The Holy Spirit is on us, within us, upon us. So this Spirit will come out of us. When we need it, we can tap into it. The Spirit of wisdom, the Spirit of fear of the Lord, and all the spirits, we can tap into it. Whom? Those believing in Him would receive. Yeah, we received it already. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given. Because Jesus was not yet and not glorified. That is not important. The important thing is you have the 
Holy Spirit in you. Yeah? And the seven spirits are flowing in you. So that you can be a witness, a good witness, a strong witness to the outside dying world. And also to the body of Christ. Amen? So, be careful of what comes out of your mouth. Amen? Amen. What comes out of your mouth? Let's, uh, let's, do you understand that part of it? Yeah, understand fully? Let's go to Psalm 19. I'll just show you here and there. Okay? Uh, Psalm 19, verse 23. The Indonesian version might be a little bit different, you know? Maybe 24, maybe 22. It's a little bit different. Not Psalm 20, sorry, Psalm 19. Psalm 19, verse 23. Oh, sorry, Proverbs 19. <laughs> so, Proverbs 19, verse 23. Got it? Proverbs. Proverbs 19. The fear of the Lord leads to life. Remember we said the fear of the fear of the Lord is wisdom also, right? Yeah. So we will know to choose between right and wrong. Good and bad. Okay? For he for he who has it will abide in satisfaction. What does it say? Will abide. Will abide means will stay, will live satisfaction and you will not be visited with evil because you know the difference between good and bad. This spirit is in you. Okay? Uh, let's go. Same one. Uh, Proverbs 20 verse 5 Proverbs 20 verse 5. Got it? Everybody? Counsel in the heart of man is like deep water. Just now we said spirit of counsel, right? See, counsel of a man. See this word here, deep. And this is deep in us. It's in us. Deep water, but a man of understanding will draw it out. Mm -hmm. The time of it, you will draw it out. It will bubble up and come out. Amen? So, you know. Let me see that if I can get it. You. Okay, uh, I want to show you to choose what you want to choose now that the spirits are in you, the seven spirits of God, according to uh, Isaiah 11 2 and Luke 4 18 is in you. So, how are we going to choose? Let's go to Deuteronomy 30. 30. This chapter talks about a choice of life and death. We all have a choice, right? Whether we want to be the people of the world or whether we want to be uh, the people of God, children of God. Amen? Deuteronomy is, what's in uh, Indonesian? Ulangan ya? Saya kas, saya bahasa kas. Let's go to verse 14. 
got verse 14. 14 and 15, you can get it. You can put it up. But the word, the word, each one should be a capital W. It's okay. The word is very near you. It's near you there. Near you. How near can it be in your mouth? Okay? In your mouth. Remember, it's in your mouth. And in your heart. Because you have meditated it, right? You have meditated it, so it's in your heart. And when it's in your heart, it's able to come out. That <laughs> uh, you may do. See the word do? That you may do. You may do. Amen? Do. The pastor is not going to do for you. I'm not going to do for you, but you are going to do it. Because you have the word of God. You are going to speak it. Okay, the next one. Next. See, I have set before you life and good, death and evil. Amen. So God is giving you on a plate. Today. Yeah, a day today. 11th of August. See, I have set before you life and good. Also, death and evil. So we have a choice. Not God is not going to force you. Choose this. You know, He's not a person that will force you. So He's giving you two choices. So it's up to you what you want to choose. Then we go down. Mm. We go down to 17, verse 17. Verse 17. your heart. See? God is so good to put this word if. If. That means a choice is there. If your heart turns away from God. That means you don't want God. You reject God. You go wrong ways. You turn away from God. Turn away so that you do not hear. See how the listening is. The ear is very important. That we listen. And are drawn away. That means we no more want Jesus. We no more listen to counsel. We no more listen to the word of God. We no more read the word of God and worship other gods and serve them. Hmm? So let's not do it. Let's not harden our hearts that we will turn away from God. That we will not listen anymore. We will not hear and worship other gods. Other gods doesn't mean that we really worship them. It can be your television, it can be your time spent calling somebody and spending so much of time with that person that is taking you away from God. And this person and this, this, this place or whatever becomes an idol to you. Yeah? It was hard for me, uh, for especially with television, uh, when Indonesian television uh, came to Malaysia. I watched from morning to night. <laughs> <laughs> no, TV series. Yeah, I used to watch. And when they spoke, I spoke. But my my motive is correct. <laughs> I wanted to learn. So when they spoke, I spoke. They spoke, I spoke. But then it became like an idol for me. When a telephone calls come, I say, I'm sorry, uh, can you call me later? I'm busy. <laughs> Therefore, 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 
therefore, that means God is saying like, please, yeah, pleading you, please. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. Amen? Okay, I repeat this again. I call heaven and earth as witness. That means God is a witness here yeah, that against you that you that I have set before you life and life and death. So God is saying, I set before you life and death, blessing and curse. See, He set before you two things, right? A choice. Therefore, please, I beseech you, I plead to you, choose life. Why do you want to choose life? For a reason. That you, first is you, yeah? You and your descendants may live. Amen? May live. Live spiritually and not die spiritually. See, why most of the generation, the older generation, have not spoken to the younger, to the next generation about Jesus? They kept quiet. So this generation did not know about Jesus, did not know what their parents went through about Jesus. Amen? So they went away. They went away from God. But the Bible says in Psalms, one generation shall praise the Lord to another generation and another generation. For example, you are the first generation. You went through trials. You know the Lord. You became a witness to the Lord. So you have fullness of the Lord with you. Okay? And your children, when you're sitting at the table or wherever, you're talking about the Lord. Hey, I went through this and the Lord brought me out of this. The Lord, I chose life. I chose blessing. I did not choose curse. I did not just choose death. So they heard, isn't it? They heard. They heard. So they heard and they brought forth to their children. It's already the first, second and the third. So the life goes on. The blessing goes on. It's not stopped there. The blessing goes on and on and on. So you see, your generations will live. But most of the Westerners, they did not. They stopped at their level. But the Westerners were such a blessing to the Asians. Amen? They came out as missionaries. They built hospitals. They built clinics. They built schools. Amen? But they did not tell this life, this blessing to the next children. So let's not keep quiet. We have mouth to speak. So you will choose blessing. You will choose life. Amen? Amen. Today, this is put forward to you. That you will choose blessing. That you will choose life. That the rivers, the fountain, the well that is in you, the spirits of God that is in you will well up and come up and be a blessing. Because you choose your mouth. Life. You choose to be a blessing with your mouth. Amen. I close with that, that you will choose. Verse 20, please. Remember, you and your descendants will live. Whenever you meet with your mother, with your sisters, with your brothers, talk about what God did for you. <coughs> and that story will go to your mother. Your mother, <coughs> as usual, all mothers like to talk about their children. So this will go to the aunties, to the uncles, to the cousins. Amen? So how? The love of God is praying. <coughs> I call heaven and earth. Oh, 20. 20. It's okay. If it's too long, we can lock the doors and all of us can remain here. <laughs> because uh, Jeremy is giving us a good treat today. Don't forget. Can I read it for you? Wow. Verse 20, that you may love the Lord your God. Amen. That you may love who? 
you. It starts with you, not your brother, your sister, your friend. But you love the Lord with all. Love the Lord that you may love God. That you that you may love the Lord your God. Amen. Yeah. That you may again talks about you may obey His voice. See whose voice? We are voice of the world. We are voice of the church. So let's obey the voice. Let's have a listening ear. Amen. Amen. And that you again may cling to him like the woman with the issue of blood. Yeah, everybody was pushing, was pushing, he was pushing. And she said, if only I can touch his garment. If only I can touch his garment. She, she made a way. As a woman, you cannot be there. With that kind of disease, you cannot even be seen in public, but she made herself break. break. She said, I want him more than anything else. That means she loved him. She heard about him. She knows about him. So she pushed her way. She pushed her way through this, all these strong, big, burly men. And she touched his hem. And what became of her? She became whole. So you want to be made whole. You want to be uh, uh, love Jesus. You want your blessing. Blessing only comes when you touch the hem of his garment. With all your heart. Amen. Then it goes on to say, and that you, again you, may dwell in the land. That means you that are in Australia, <coughs> you that are in Adelaide, that you will dwell here. That means you will stay here. Amen. Which the Lord saw to Abraham. But the Lord has given you, the Lord has brought you here. Nobody can take you away. Unless it is time for you to go back. Then you go back. But if the Lord puts you here, He has a work for you. He has a blessing for you. He, you, you your life is here. Amen. Alright. That you may love who? See how many you? You have one you here. One. Two. Three, did I miss? Four, correct? Am I correct? For yeah. you. So it's talking about you, right? Yeah, talking about you. That you may love. See the word love. Love who? Yeah, love the Lord, your God. Remember, he's your God. Nobody is your God, but he is your God. <laughs> that you may obey his voice or listen to his voice. Remember the song, uh, Psalm 23, you will listen to his voice. Remember, what's the, oh, I forgot that song. Shepherd of my soul, I give you full control wherever you may live. It's okay, we can still listen to the word of God. I have a powerful voice. Amen. We will, wherever you may go, I will listen to your voice. Amen. So we are what? Sheep. Amen. We are sheep. The sheep will listen to the shepherd. Will you listen to somebody else? No. We will listen to his voice. Amen? We will listen to his voice and that again the word you may cling. I, I told you the word cling. That means you will never leave. It's more like leaning, cling. Amen? That you may cling to him, Jesus. That Jesus is your life. Amen? Television is not your life. Fashion is not your life. Boyfriend, girlfriend is not your life. But... He is your life. Amen. Amen. Everything will pass away. And the word of God will remain. Amen. And the length of your days. That means you will live a good life. You will live a long life. That you again may dwell in the land. So you are put here. From Indonesia. From Sorong. From wherever you came from. You are put here for a reason. Amen? For a reason that you will dwell. And the meaning of dwell is also peace. You'll be at peace. Because God brought you here. Who brought you here? You didn't, you're not a refugee. None of you are refugees. You came here with papers. Amen? So you will dwell. You will dwell. You will dwell in peace. And you'll be blessed here. Because you choose whatever you heard today. That you will Obey. You will listen. You will choose life. You will choose. 
blessing. Can I have the verse that I sent to Jeremy? <coughs> I close with this verse that I got. Uh, there are four principles we need to maintain. Uh, this is from my this is a very good man of God. If you have his book, please read. Number one, first read the word of God. So whatever you have learned today, whatever you have heard today, life and blessing, curse and the first thing that we must have, the seven spirits in us will is dwelling in us will well up when we read the word of God. Amen? Amen. Read the word of God. Second, consume the word of God until it consumes you. Understand? Yeah. Until it is in you. The word is of God is in your mouth. Amen? You saw in Deuteronomy and in your heart that you will do it. So if it didn't consume you, nothing comes out of your heart. It's not a reality to you. Hmm? Third, believe the word of God. Believe it. Whether you like it or not, that's God's word. That's not the, the word of man. Word of man will fail you. Word of man will let you down. But God says, God will perform it. When will God perform it? You have to wait. The waiting time is very long. But patience. Patience will pay. Alright? Fourth, act on the word of God. Remember? In Deuteronomy it says that you may do it. So act. Act on the word of God. Okay, I close with this. Four principles that I pray that is in your life. That you will function what God has called you to function. Don't play church. Don't come and sit down and go in and go out. You know, when I became a young Christian in 1985, because I'm a homemaker and the other congregation, they were all working. So the pastor will say, Hazel, uh, we, we are having a seminar. Can you come and cook? I started with that in church, cooking for 13 people. And then after that, I, I made uh, unleavened bread. Then after that, I did flowers for the church. See the progression. I didn't start on the pulpit, please. I started from low. And God will increase you. Be, be, be on fire for God. Can I not have this on the, on the media, please? I want to say something.